Are you a suburbs person? Maybe you're thinking about moving to the Denver metro or just buying a house in the area, but you don't want to live in Denver. You don't want to live in the city. It's too much for you. The noise, the traffic, the hustle and bustle, the constant go, go, go of city life. You can't do it. You need more space and you need quiet. Well, what if I told you that many Denver neighborhoods actually aren't all that loud and you can get space and that they're very walkable and family friendly. And at least at certain points in recent years, the home prices in the suburbs have actually exceeded the home prices in Denver. And so you can get many of these things actually in town and be more central, but you've heard all that, you don't care. Sam, I'm a suburb person and I wanna move out to the burbs. Where should I go? Well, fear not because I can help. In fact, I spent my first few years after moving to the great state of Colorado in the suburbs. I'm gonna share a little bit about that with you and also give you my favorite places to live in the Denver suburbs. And to be honest, my least favorite. All that in like seven seconds. And in case you don't know Sam Newman, Denver area realtor, it is my goal to be your go-to guy for anything real estate in the Denver Metro or Colorado as a whole. Please reach out. It is my favorite thing when people reach out from YouTube and it's happening every day. My info is everywhere. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna talk my favorite suburbs. And after that, we're gonna talk my least favorite suburbs to live. I got four-ish favorites and three least favorites. And what I'm looking at here is the areas that I think provide the best overall quality of life and that combines a number of different factors. And I'm staying within the Denver Metro and considering true suburbs here. So I'm not going up to the foothills because it's a completely different ball game. We're not looking at Boulder and we're not going all the way up to like Firestone Frederick, although it is kind of awesome up there. But I got a map pulled up here of the Denver Metro and let's take a look. So number one on the list and what I alluded to before was the Westminster Broomfield area. I'm going to combine two and call it just one area. So you got Westminster here on the northwest side of town. Look at that gerrymandering. And that flows right into Broomfield to the north. So I lived in both these places my first years in the Denver Metro. The reasoning was a few things. Number one, I was just getting my legs about me and I needed to figure out where to live. And number two, I was working in Boulder at the time. So I needed to be close there. And the Broomfield Westminster area is great for that. This is number one on the list. It's not my favorite overall, but Broomfield Westminster is very good. I wouldn't say it's amazing great, but there's enough to do. It's close to Boulder and Denver and Fort Collins if you need to get there. It's got great access to any of those different directions. You're up on the northwest side of town here, so you are close to the mountains. And there's actually some decent food and shopping. There's a mall in Westminster. Broomfield has the interlocking area with some good hotels, great golf courses. So if people come to visit, it's very suburby very spread out, but it's a good, solid, serviceable suburb, Broomfield or Westminster. Lots of open space, actually a number of golf courses, access to the mountains, plenty of different types of homes to choose from, and typically up there you're going to get bigger homes and bigger lots than you would in town. Not setting my world on fire, but worth a look if any of these things I've mentioned appeal to you. Number two, we're going to go from the northwest side of town to the southwest side of town, and we're going to go down to Littleton. So a few things to note here. First of all, Littleton is, it might be my favorite Denver suburb. But if you look at the map and you look at this outline, it looks pretty small. It's actually not. This is just the downtown Littleton area that Google is showing here. But Littleton itself actually spans all the way over to Ken Carroll, Columbine, kind of Kipling Hills, all these areas here to the southwest. Anywhere in this area, you're basically going to have a Littleton address. What I like about Littleton is a few things. Uh, number one, how close it is to the foothills. It's got great access to Indian Hills and Evergreen and getting over on 285 here. And then it also is very close to Chatfield State Park. It's just very close to a lot of what makes the Denver area great, which is the outdoor stuff. The foothills, the open space, all that stuff. A lot of nice homes in Littleton. You can find a lot of classic two stories with bigger lots. You can get big backyards, a lot of HOAs. So if you're into that, if you're into a covenant controlled community, Littleton has a lot of those. You'll find pools, you'll find community amenities, you'll find all that stuff. But it doesn't feel super monotonous suburby. There's still a lot of character in all these different little Littleton neighborhoods. And it has its own heart and soul, its own little downtown area. So if we pull in here, basically 
just along 85 and along the light rail here is downtown Littleton. And downtown Littleton, actually pretty awesome. It's got this whole strip of bars and restaurants. It doesn't look like much on a map, but when you're there, there's plenty to do. It's walkable, there's good parking. I've mentioned this before, but I've had many a lovely evening in downtown Littleton and would recommend. If you're someone who wants a little more space, wants to be close to the foothills, doesn't want to be right in the middle of town, and you're okay being on the southwest side, so if you need to get to the airport, for example, that's going to take a little longer, but if you need to get to the mountains, that's going to be faster. If that's you, Littleton's a great place to look. And it's still, I mean, 20 minutes from central Denver and all those amenities, plus you got your own little downtown. That's what I love about it. For number three, we're gonna go back to the north side of town and actually go all the way up to North Glen. So North Glen is close to Westminster and Broomfield. What I love about North Glen, it's right on the I-25 corridor, so you can get up north or down south pretty easily, assuming there's no traffic on 25, so time it well. But the thing I really like is that home prices are just cheaper here than a lot of other areas. In North Glen, you can get a single family home for five to $600,000, a well-equipped home with a yard and a garage. You can get a town home for four, 450, 500 for a nice big one. Compare and contrast this with say Westminster Broomfield where you're probably paying another hundred grand for what we're talking about out the door. If you're trying to make your budget go a little farther, North Glen might be worth a look. It's not as close to Boulder, it's not on the west side of town, it's straight up north, but there's a number of new build communities, there's established communities as well, but North Glen is growing. And so for that reason, I see it as a, a solid investment for the future if you're looking to buy a home. There's not a ton to do in North Glen, but it's close enough to everything else that you can get kind of anywhere you want to go. If you're working on the south side of town or in Colorado Springs, I would avoid it because I wouldn't want to be fighting through 25 going through town every day. But if you're fine sticking around the north side of town, North Glen might be it. And then the last of my favorite suburbs, and we are going to switch orientations again and go all the way down to South Denver, is Parker. Parker, when I moved to town, felt like it was halfway to Mexico. It felt like it was so far down south. And if you look at the map, it does feel down south. But the metro has expanded so much that you look at where Parker is, but then, I mean, you look at where Castle Pines is, you look where Castle Rock is, a really popular place to live now, that's well south of Parker. So really, with the way everything's expanding, it's not that far out there anymore. And what I love about Parker is, yes, it's a suburb, so you have a lot of similar-looking new home communities. But there's also some areas that are completely different. There's actually a deep history of ranching and horse properties in Parker. So it gives us this vibe where it feels like you're in or near a city, but it also has a little flavor of the country too. Now, to the southeast of Parker, you can go all the way out to Elizabeth if you really want to be in the country. Elizabeth is, that's it. I should do a tour, a video tour of Elizabeth at some point because it is different. It is very country. It is very cowboy hat and spurs. It is very political science for a certain candidate. Uh, it is a different deal. But if you don't want to go that hard on it and you don't need acreage, but you like a little more space and you like feeling like you're in a little bit of the country where you can get some mountain views too and some space, that's Parker. Some of the neighborhoods are pretty expensive. Stonegate, for example, very popular. Some of these places are going to be spendier to live, but some of them not so much. And there's plenty of homes. So there's plenty to choose from, from townhomes to single family homes to even condos. And now for what everyone is usually waiting for, the list of the worst, the worst suburbs, my least favorite suburbs to live in in the Denver metro. This is weird for a couple reasons. Number one, as a real estate agent, I help people move all over the place. And honestly, it's different strokes for different folks. Some people like something that I personally wouldn't be into. I'm just giving you my opinion on this channel that may or may not match up with what you like or what you want. So I'm not trying to disparage where anybody lives. I'm just looking at the landscape of the Denver Metro and giving you my honest thoughts. Take them for what they are. And number two reason is weird is I don't really hate anywhere in the Denver Metro. I, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a big pro Denver guy, but looking at this, yeah, there's places I prefer to other places, but there's nothing that I'm like, boy, oh boy, I really hate this entire suburb overall. There's certain pockets that aren't so great and I don't like as much. We'll talk about that, but typically everything has a redeeming factor too. So let's get into it. I got three suburbs that are my least favorite in the Denver Metro, and they're in no particular order. The first one is Highlands Ranch. So if we go down here to the south suburbs, we have Highlands Ranch. You will see. It is just to the southeast, uh, really, of Littleton and the Ken Carroll area, you know, just to the east of Chatfield State Park, but it feels much different from the Littleton neighborhoods. Highlands Ranch, I don't know. 
It's just not my thing. It's just not for me. It's very master planned. There's some beautiful views of the mountains from down there, but it's very much covenant controlled community, HOAville, and a lot of cul-de-sacs. And that makes sense for some folks. Highlands Ranch as a city uh, has come a long way the last 10 years. There's a fair amount going on down there. You can kind of live in Highlands Ranch and stay in Highlands Ranch. It's just, it's well to the south. To me, there's not a whole lot that make it awesome. There's not a whole lot of character, just honestly. It's just a collection of homes and businesses, which is any place, you could argue. And if you would, I'd understand it. What I love so much about lots of parts of Colorado and Denver is that they're just awesome. There's a lot of awesome feeling places. Highlands Ranch just doesn't have that feeling to me. Second on the least favorite list, Commerce City. Now, Commerce City is actually really, really large. So there are some caveats here. This Northwest region up here, Reunion and the surrounding areas is actually very nice. Yeah, it's way out there. It's, it's a ways from town and it's actually really close to the airport. So if you like being by the airport, that's good. But if you like being more central, it's a ways out there. But home prices up there are actually much more reasonable and it's very nice. There's some mountain views and it's all basically newer master plan communities versus Highlands Ranch where the median home price is something like seven. 25 right now in the reunion area you can get a single family home for around a half million bucks in terms of denver real estate that's pretty good but the part i'm talking about is the old commerce city this part just to the west of the rocky mountain arsenal it sort of touches the 270 corridor and i-76 running northeast it is very close to the northernmost part of central park which is a very desirable neighborhood but this part of commerce city it's just not the best. It's very industrial. It should be called industrial city more than commerce city. I guess commerce city works too. But you know, if you've been there, it's just not a great feeling. So I don't hate commerce city overall. I don't love this part of it and prices are much cheaper, but I think you can do better in a different area like North Glen or like the Northeast part of commerce city. Overall, it's something I would push you away from. And by the way, before we get to number three, a real quick bonus, Lakewood, uh, which is a very popular suburb, a very big city actually, as far as, as Denver suburbs are concerned. Lakewood is very hit and miss, but overall, it's not one of the main places I say, hey, you should go look at Lakewood. Lakewood, I've often said, looks very good on a map. It's close to the mountains. There's a lot of green space when you're looking at a map. In person, it's much more hit and miss. There are some great neighborhoods. There's a lot of not so great neighborhoods in Lakewood. If you're looking in Lakewood, you can just as soon look in Littleton. But number three, least favorite suburb, Aurora. Okay, you knew I was gonna say this, probably, because Aurora has a bit of a reputation. Now, Aurora is actually the third biggest city in the state of Colorado meaning it's got a large population and a large land mass. So if you look at the map here, you're seeing a lot. There's a lot that's going on in Aurora. It basically starts in Southeast Denver and goes all the way up to the airport. So parts of Aurora, especially the newer parts, actually can be pretty nice. Talon's Reach, for example, way the heck down there, but it's a nice place to live and prices are cheaper as they are with many of these more out of the way areas. But I'm talking about old Aurora specifically. I'm talking about Havana. I'm talking about East Colfax. These are the places Talked about this before, not where I'd look to live in general. If it's something that you're looking, you know, coming in from out of town, it, it might all look the same. You might see, oh, yeah, this is just part of the eastern part of Denver. There are some great things in Aurora. Stanley Marketplace, right up here in the very north northwest edge. And also Anschutz, which is a great hospital and is just a big hospital campus. There's Children's Hospital there. There's a whole bunch of other uh, medical buildings and medical things going on. A lot of people are going to work there and they're going to say, well, okay, shouldn't I, I want to live close to work. Can I not live in Aurora? Yes, you certainly can. However, you can still be just across the street in Central Park. You can be down in Lowry, which is a very desirable neighborhood too. You can still be very close to Anschutz that way. I'd go west or northwest rather than east from Anschutz if you're looking where to live. Anyway, that's the lay of the land. Feel free to disagree. And hey, if you're wondering what I think about actual neighborhoods in the city of Denver, we're back to the city thing. I did a video ranking the top 25 neighborhoods in Denver, giving my thoughts on where they should be ranked and what I like and don't like about all of them. You can check that out here. Otherwise, I love you. Thanks for watching and we will talk soon.